Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. As I am sure you are all aware, a few days ago or a week ago, um, the Barbie movie came out and I know that I was super excited to see it. I know that a lot of you were probably super excited to see it, but I think the person who was the most excited about this movie was Ben Shapiro. Because since it came out like five days ago, this man has already uploaded three videos about it. The shortest one being 35 minutes long and the longest one being an hour long. So he's made about two and a half hours worth of videos from the Barbie movie, which you know what is very impressive. <laughs> now I went and watched the Barbie movie a few days ago and I loved it. I thought it was a fantastic movie. I could sit here and talk about my thoughts about it for ages, but that's not what we're here for. Today, what we are doing is I am on a live stream on Patreon right now and I'm going to be watching one of his videos and then we're gonna talk about it because I personally do not understand this whole thing that conservatives are saying about it being like a man-hating movie and like the wokest movie ever because all it is is just like, commenting on reality and I wouldn't really call it man-hating at all. Like there's a very large plot around men and how toxic masculinity impacts men in a negative way. It, I don't, they watched it wrong, obviously, they always do, um, but we'll get into that. But yeah, the video I thought we would watch today is the first video he uploaded, which is titled, Ben Shapiro destroys the Barbie movie for 43 minutes. Because at the time of deciding to make this video, that was the only one he had done. Then yesterday he uploaded the hour long one called Barbie is garbage, but you're not allowed to say so. And then since I last checked, he uploaded a third one, which was Brett Cooper liked Barbie and I have questions. And I am also intrigued by that video, but. We'll watch that another time. It has been like 15 hours since I filmed this and he has uploaded a fourth video about Barbie. It's titled, I just triggered the ladies on the view and the thumbnail is of course, Barbie. So for someone who loves to say, go woke, go broke, this man is milking the absolute shit out of this woke movie money. Like, I thought I was obsessed with this movie, but I don't think anyone is quite as obsessed as Ben Shapiro, considering he has made videos that total longer than the length of the actual movie that he complains is too long. We are gonna get into that because I totally, absolutely want to sit here and listen to Ben Shapiro talking about Barbie for 45 minutes. I so want to hear his opinions. And I know you all do too. So let's suffer together. Well, folks, I just got back from the theaters seeing Barbie and Oppenheimer. I'm about to review both of them. I'm going to tell you which one of these is the best blockbuster. Okay, so he's reviewing both movies and it's just misleading me with the title. I'm going to give my review of the Barbie movie in the most Oppenheimer fashion. Okay, so he uh, threw the bobbies in a like trash bin and then he set them on fire, which is fun. Playing this screams over the top of it, that feels like a little bit of a kill. This movie is not just a piece of <laughs> This movie is a flaming piece of dog <laughs> piled atop an entire dumpster on fire, piled atop a landfill filled with dog <laughs> Bro, calm down, calm, calm down. Take it down a peg and stop overreacting. The only thing that can be said for this film is production design. The production design is really nice. The costumes are really nice. Put aside all of the beautiful costumes, which is there for the ladies. I love put aside the beautiful costume design that was there for the ladies. The whole movie was there for the ladies, bro. <laughs> it wasn't just the costume design that was there for the ladies. It was, it was the whole movie. The whole movie was there for the ladies. Every joke that happens in this film happens basically within the first 45 seconds of the film. For example, Barbie turns on the water and there's no water. Ooh, because you know, like in Barbie house, there's no actual water. Do, do you get it? And then she drinks, but there's no actual liquid in the, in, the actual, in the actual cup. Oh my God, because she's a Barbie doll. Oh, I get it. Okay, that's all the jokes. There are no more jokes for the rest of the film. I don't think those were jokes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was a joke. I think that was just more setting the scene to tell you where they were and that they were in a giant bobby house and that it functions like a giant bobby house. It, wa it wasn't a joke. Good try. 
Um, and if you really think there were no other jokes for the rest of the movie, you're, you, don't, don't lie, bro. Don't, don't tell me you don't think anything in the movie was funny. Because you just can't do that. I don't believe that you didn't find anything else in the movie funny. The intended audience for this film is moms and their eight-year-old daughters. That's the intended audience for the film. I know because the previews for the film were all kids' movies. The movie was for everyone. That's what the ad said. The movie is for everyone. If you love Barbie, if you hate Barbie, whatever, the movie is for you. And yes, that includes children and movies that are rated as like G that can be for children to watch mean that they are going to advertise children's movies because it's going to be advertising other movies that children can watch. The target demographic was everyone, but yeah, children included. This movie is not made for any of those people. In fact, this movie is made for no one. So the basic idea of the film, they, they really have no basic idea of the film. They don't know whether they hate Barbie or they were supposed to kind of like Barbie. It, it, it seems they kind of despise Barbie as a fascist emblem, as we'll get to. He really does not understand anything, does he? He doesn't, he didn't get it at all. Like he hasn't even spoken about the movie, but he didn't get it at all. Not even a little bit that he even begin to understand what was going on in this movie or who it was for. And just like the lack of, just understanding of women in general is so wild. This movie was made for no one. This movie was made for women. <laughs> Breaking fucking news, bro. But things are allowed to be made for women. Shocker, not everything's about you. But that's who it was made for. That's who related the most to this movie because a lot of men like you refuse to acknowledge the relatability inside it. The basic sort of premise of the film, politically speaking, is that men and women are on two sides of the divide and they, and they hate each other. And literally the only way you can have a happy world is if the women ignore the men and the men ignore the women. Bro did not understand. <laughs> The only way to have a happy world is that if men ignore women and women ignore men, that was the opposite point that the movie made. Like literally quite the opposite point. How did you get it so wrong? It was saying that that was bad. It was saying that men and women should be treated equally and that we are equally as important. That was kind of the, that was kind of the gist of it is that in the real world, women are ignored and in the Barbie world, Men are ignored. Both are bad. That was the takeaway, bro. I don't know how you came to a different conclusion, but good for you for missing the point entirely. It is a bad film. Put aside the politics. Like, really. I, I was sitting there with a bunch of my producers. I'm a little bit more political than my producers. You can't sit here and tell me the producers of The Daily Wire aren't political and that you're only a little bit political. That's fucking hilarious, Ben. That's so funny. Don't fucking lie and bullshit like that. <laughs> the producers of my show aren't very political and I'm a little bit more political than them. Shut the, f shut up. From the beginning, you know what this movie is going to be and it's gonna be a very cynical take on what Barbie is. It, it, it's as though you were going to make Toy Story except that toys are all evil. They're all bad and you're supposed to hate them and you should burn them. I'm sorry, I'm sure he's about to explain the opening, but he's saying that they made Barbie a cynical thing because the opening of the movie explained her to be something she's not. The opening of the movie was literally explaining what Barbie is and has always been. That she is there to empower women, tell women they can be anyone they wanna be and do anything that they want to do and that they can take power into their own lives and achieve anything. And he's like, that's ruining Barbie. That's such a cynical take on Barbie. That's not what Barbie is for. I don't know why they turned her around like that. Bro. Yeah, exactly, Dwecky. I'm glad that he knows nothing. He knew nothing going into this. He knows nothing about Barbie. I don't know what I expected, but my God. That's kind of the message of the film is that the Barbies are bad for the world. Hold on, wait. <laughs> Sorry, I should have kept playing. The message of the film is that Barbies are bad for the world? Is that just saying that like feminists are bad for this world? That is a take you would have. It's quite scary, honestly, this position he seems to have taken. It's kind of, it's quite scary, I'm not gonna lie to you, because what, what? It starts with Helen Mirren explaining that back in the day, girls would only play with dolls, dolls that looked like babies. This could be fun, at least for a while anyway. Ask your mother, because your mother actually hates you and doesn't like being a mom, you see. <laughs> hmm. These are the same people who think the left I triggered snowflakes. This is the same man who says that we read too deeply into things. This is the same fucking man who says we're triggered by everything. He thinks that like 
a comment of being like, ask your mom. Being a mother can be exhausting sometimes. He's like, you think they're trying to promote that your mothers hate you and that you hate women and that being a mother is bad. Calm down, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> you have Helen Mirren saying, because Barbie can be anything, women can be anything. At least that's what the Barbies think. See, in the real world, women can't be anything. And that's one of the messages of the film. In the real world, men run pretty much everything, which is weird. Who greenlit this piece of shit? Yeah, she did say that because that's true. And that's how it is. And they actually showed that explicitly in the film. And I'm sorry that they held a mirror up to you, but yeah, yikes. I mean, Greta Gerwig is a lady. She's making a good living off of this. Margot Robbie is playing the lead. In fact, the entire cast, aside from basically Ryan Gosling, is women. So um, it seems like women are doing okay. Okay, so because this one movie has a cast that's predominantly women and a director that is a woman. It means all women are doing A-OK. -okay. They're all doing A-OK. -okay. This is the same fucking energy as that one gothics video I watched a while back being like, diversity isn't a real thing. Let me show you, I'll Google black actor and you'll see that they exist. It's like, no one said that there aren't successful women. No one fucking said that. No one. <laughs> yes, there are successful women. Yes, you can be successful as a woman. However, there are way less successful women. A lot of women who are successful are much less successful than their male counterparts. You want to look at movies? How many movies have a predominantly female cast? I will fucking sit here and wait for you to name five movies with a predominantly female cast that were made for women. I'll, I'll fucking wait for you to give me five. Whereas how many, how many can you tell me that are primarily male cast made for men. Pretty much all of them. Almost all of them. So like, shut the fuck up, bro. This one movie stars women is about women. And so now everything is okay for women. That's the fucking point. There was quite a large male presence in this movie. There was a lot more male presence in this movie than I was expecting, especially because I'd already started seeing this rhetoric before I went to see it. Like I would, I would say that there wasn't that big of a disparity. You're just so used to it being so male heavy that anything other than that feels like they're shoving women in your face, which that it proves the point exactly, so. And the problem for Ken, the problem is set up for Ken, is that Ken is dependent on Barbie. Right, because ben, Ken is kind of secondary. And we also set up at the very beginning that Barbie doesn't like Ken. She finds Ken annoying. She finds Ken ridiculous, which again is sort of against the concept of Ken and Barbie. But the, the basic idea is that, that Barbie is an independent woman and Ken is completely superfluous. Yeah, that, that is the point. That was the point in the dolls. And that is the point in the movie. That's always been the point. That's always been the point. Ken like pines after Barbie. He's just Ken. Barbie is living her best independent life and like, yeah, Ken's there too. Like that, that, that's the point. That's always been the point. You've just made up some weird concept of Barbie in your head that is not real. Uh, you created what you think Barbie is, but, it, but not what Barbie actually is because you're misogynistic. That's so, that's on you. We get black female president Barbie because this is of course the greatest of all possible worlds So Kamala Harris. Is the Barbie version is, uh, is the president of the United States. I'm sorry, fucking, what did you just say? This isn't about Kamala Harris. This is about just black women in general being able to have a position of power and being able to be president. I don't give a fuck what your politics are. I don't care what you think about Kamala Harris. Saying that you think Kamala Harris shouldn't be in a position of power, so therefore no black women should be, is like mind blowing. Why would you fucking say that? Just like maniacally or like witchily laughing over the idea of having a black woman president specifically because you don't like the current black woman who holds any political power is like the most like, misogynistic and racist thing. Holy shit. You have a problem with a black woman being a president in a fucking movie about dolls? Bro, what the fuck is wrong with you? This isn't about Kamala Harris. You thought that was about like promoting Kamala Harris as president? No, it's not. It's about giving representation to 
young black girls, young girls in general, even older women, and like just having women in positions of power where they've never seen themselves before. It has nothing to do with real world politics. Like it does have everything to do with real world politics, but not real world political people. Just in general, telling girls that they can do anything. No matter who they are, no matter what they look like, no matter where they're from, no matter anything, girls can do anything. And that includes being president and the women they cast to be the president was a black woman. I thought you said <laughs> that you shouldn't fucking typecast. They shouldn't have found a black Ariel because they thought that it was woke. They should have just cast who they thought was right, which for all you fucking know, they did. And it happened to be a black woman who was cast because she was right. Same in this role. Do you know specifically that they were like, we want a black president to add representation? Maybe, wouldn't fucking matter if they did, but maybe they also just cast who they thought was the best person to fit that role and it happened to be a black woman. Why is that a fucking problem? Anyway, my God. Okay, carrying on. Again, interlaced through all of this is just more and more and more politics, right? One of the Barbies is a trans Barbie and this is treated totally normally as though this is a female Barbie. Hey, bro, one second here. Listen to me for a moment. Maybe she wasn't even trans in the movie. Maybe Bobby wasn't even trans. Maybe she was just a cis woman played by a trans woman because, you know, they're they're allowed to do that. They can do that. <laughs> and even if this Bobby was trans in the Bobby world, that doesn't fucking matter either, does it? It doesn't fucking matter. Nowhere, nowhere in the movie do they even mention being trans or gay or anything. Not even a single time. And you're gonna sit here and be like, they're telling kids it's normal to be trans. Like one, it is normal to be trans. Two, they never fucking even said that. <laughs> they never even fucking mentioned it. There is a Barbie played by a trans actress. That's it. That is literally it. And I promise you, most people didn't know and certainly no fucking kids knew <laughs> because it doesn't matter. And it's not a focal point on the movie because it doesn't fucking matter. Like, yes, the point in Barbie is that you can be who you want, you can be anything you want. And that includes being trans, it includes being queer, but they don't explicitly say that. <laughs> I'm only 11 minutes into this and I've been here for 45 minutes. <laughs> okay. Ken and Barbie head off to the real world to try to find the, the person who is playing with Barbie. And immediately upon arriving in the real world, Barbie is hit with an overwhelming tsunami of sexism. Like right away, boom, she walks in and a bunch of men just leer at her and say, give us a smile, blondie, which is something that no one under the age of 70 has, has said to a woman in the recent past. You're just fucking straight up wrong, bro. You aren't a woman, so you can't comment on that. I know so many women who have been told to smile more. I also know for a fact that when you do go out in public, dress like how Bobby is dressed, men will stare, men will say things, and you will feel uncomfortable. All of the men who are who are leering at her and gazing at her, they are they have an undertone of violence. Everything's in, she, she's threatened, she's physically threatened because this is the real world. The real world is not like Barbie land. In the real world, all women are, are victims. They are deep and abiding victims of the system. Yes. <laughs> like, yes, straight up, just yes, that is the point they were making because that is how it is. Does it fucking suck? Yes, that's the point. You can't comment on that, Ben, because you've never experienced it. You've never experienced going outside and feeling unsafe. Like most women, if not every woman, has felt at some point or another, or even fucking every day. Ken, meanwhile, is getting super happy because Ken, who has been sort of an underling in Barbie land, now he's realizing he's part of the patriarchy and the patriarchy is awesome. Ken is loving the patriarchy. You might've thought that what you were going to get was Ken gets treated with respect as a person and Barbie gets treated with respect as a person. And that's a better, nope, wrong, not to skip ahead. Barbie land just gets restored and the men are still subservient. That's the best, that's the best version of the world. It wasn't saying that was the best version of the world. If you paid attention to like one of the last lines in the movie, of being like, and now men will have the same amount of power in Barbie land that women do 
in the real world, that was exactly. So <laughs> that was based in reality. It was meant to be a fucking like joke, a commentary on being like, we're just going to treat men here how women are treated in the real world. It's a step in the right direction. That's what equality is. Because people like you sit here and say that right now, where we are, what we have is equality. That women are equal. We're at the best place we possibly could be. Women don't need any more. We're all equal. Gender equality is real and it's thriving. And so at the end of the Barbie movie, they say, men now have what women have in the real world. And you're here like, they're treating men like garbage. They fucking hate men. They're trash. They're subservient. They're the second class citizens. Exactly. So you get it then. Barbie is trying to track down the girl who's playing with her. She receives a lecture from the teenage girl about how Barbie has ruined the world and actually is fascist. How Barbie is a sexualized capitalistic emblem. How Barbie has created unattainable feminine ideals. How Barbie is ruining the planet with rampant consumerism. You get like this full lecture right in the middle of the film. It's truly awful. I think you missed the point here is that uh, the point was that that rant she went on isn't isn't what Barbie is. The, the point of the rant she went on is that that is what people are currently being told Barbie is. That is the misconception of what Barbie is. That is what like recent development has been telling us Barbie is. But it's not who Bobby is, as you can tell by Bobby's reaction. Bobby was taken and like, you know, stereotypical Bobby has been promoted and pushed as the Bobby. And a lot of people used it as ideal body goals. They've used it to capitalize and to sell things and like, and the likes. And that has become its purpose, or at least that is what people believe its purpose is. But that's not the purpose of Bobby. That's the, that's literally the point. That whole rant in there, you weren't meant to agree with her. You were meant to feel bad for Bobby and realize and understand that that's not what Bobby is. And it sucks that that's what she's been turned into. And that this movie is aiming to hopefully undo that damage and remind us who Bobby actually is and what her intended purpose is and has always been. If you thought that they put that rant in there to be like, this Bobby fucking sucks and is ruining every, you watched the entire movie incorrectly. It only sets up the, the only good line of the film. And that is where Barbie is trying to contemplate whether she's a fascist or not. And she says, I don't control the railways or the flow of commerce. Now there's only one problem with that line as with the entire movie. There is no character consistency. Barbie is supposed to be an idiot bubblehead piece of plastic from Barbie land. How does she know what a fascist is? No, she's not. Oh my God, that that's literally the opposite of the point. Barbie is meant to be an airhead piece of plastic that's unintelligent. Did you not see the physicist that won a Nobel Prize? The female president you just fucking talked about a moment ago. Like the point of Barbie is that she is intelligent, that she is strong, that she is fearless, that she can do anything. She is not an airhead or stupid. She is meant to be women. Are you just, you're just saying how you view women at this point because Barbie represents women. That's the fucking point. If you have watched the movie to this point and listened to everything they've said and your thoughts are Barbie is meant to be an airhead dumb bimbo from Barbie land. What the fuck is wrong with you? Ken is already headed back to Ken, uh, to, to Barbie land where he has immediately established the patriarchy. So just to, uh, just to point out here, the point of the film is that the matriarchy is amazing. Uh, women are amazing at everything. That's not the point of the movie. The point of the movie is not that the matriarchy is amazing. The point of the movie is women can do anything. Yes, the point of the movie is not the matriarchy is amazing. That's not the point. You missed the point entirely. We've already, we already know that, I've already said that, but my God, stop just saying over and over that you didn't understand the movie. Just, you need to stop repeating that you don't have any media literacy at all and that you just hate women because that's all you've said time and time over. You have no media literacy and you hate women. We get it? You've said it enough times now. Ken walks in and within two seconds, he has taken over all of Barbie land. And he has turned it into the Kendom within, within two seconds. It's so apparently the women are so unbelievably competent and brilliant and great at everything over in Barbie land that an idiot man walks in and takes over the whole place inside of two seconds. They were brainwashed. Did you miss that part somehow? That they got fucking brainwashed? Did we, 
Did you, did you somehow skip over that part? Like they didn't explicitly show that being like happening, but that's because they were focused on Bobby when Ken went back to Kenland. I don't know what fucking happened in that time. I don't know how they were brainwashed, but they were brainwashed. They did tell us that. They filled us in. You don't need to see every single detail. You you were, you were told, okay? You were complaining about it being too long. If they showed you every single tiny little part, it would have been even longer. So get over it. Just catch up and understand they were brainwashed. We later learned they didn't have immunity. And the way that they get immunity is by learning to hate the men. You got, that's the way. They weren't learning to hate men. They were learning to love women. It was them being like, hey, that's not fucking fair. I'm, I'm great too and I deserve better than that. That's not them learning to hate men. That's them learning to love themselves. I'm sorry that you view female empowerment as hating men, but that sounds like a you problem. Okay, the Kens are about to have a vote to change the constitution. And not only are they gonna hold the vote, they're gonna be very fair about it. They're gonna hold it in 48 hours. They're gonna hold it in a couple of days to make sure that the Barbies have time to actually form a counter plan. Why would they do that? No reason. They don't think about the fact that Barbies can be like turned back. They're, 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 they're not thinking about that. Ken's a fucking stupid as well, might I add. Might, might you be reminded? Ken's don't know what's going on. Ken, Ken liked the patriarchy because it meant he got horses. He didn't actually entirely know what it meant or what it was. He didn't know how to hold like power. He didn't know how to run a government. He just knows usually you vote. So that's what they were gonna do. And he said later on, he didn't know how to do this. He didn't even really fucking wanna do it, but he was doing it anyway. So like, they didn't think about the fact that the Bobbies could vote against them. They didn't actually care that much. Apparently the Kens are going to build a wall to keep people from getting in or getting out. Now, here's the weird part. No one has ever entered or exited Barbie land before. Why are you building a wall? All of the ideas and stuff that he's getting about the patriarchy and the well and government is coming from American books. He's just learning from our world and he's like, they did it, now I'm gonna do it. Does he know what it means? Not really. He's just wants to patriarchy because it means he gets horses and power. And they're gonna try to figure out a strategy. How do they stop the Kens from winning the vote? Now, you might say to yourself, wait, um, aren't the women a uh, majority? Do they not have agency, the women? There is one Ken for every Bobby. They established that already. Every Bobby has a Ken. It is equal. They did establish that several times throughout the film. My God. We end up with Barbie complaining. She's complaining to weird Barbie. And she says, oh my God, they've brainwashed all the other Barbies. They've brainwashed all the other Barbies. She says, quote, either you're brainwashed or you're weird and ugly. There is no in between. And weird Barbie says, tell me about it. And this is the perspective of the film. Either you're a third wave feminist kook who hates men, like truly hates men, or you are brainwashed. You are an example of this, Ben, here of like, you believe that women are either, you know, subservient. Women either follow what you believe is correct order in society, or they're ugly, they're trash, they're useless, um, they're man haters. Like that's your perspective there. That, that was the commentary is literally just how you think. And they called you out on that and you were like, oh, promoting this terrible idea. That's what you think and constantly say on your channel like every fucking day. You are the problem. You are the people this movie is calling out. No one is calling the Kens trash and bad men. The point is that they're just men. They're neither good nor bad. They're just, they're vibing. They're just beaching. That's the point. They're not bad. They're not trash. No one said that they're trash. They're being pretty awful right now. <laughs> but in general, they're not trash. This is just showing the pipeline of how you can go from being someone who's just a dude, a friendly guy whom you're friends with and who you like and you get along with to someone who is insanely power hungry and thinks he's above everyone. And that can happen extremely quickly. It's not saying all men are trash. It's just saying that this pipeline is very real and very scary and very dangerous. I mean, the only decent male is Alan, who apparently wants to wear pink and probably is supposed to be gay. I mean, I think it's supposed to be pretty clear from the film. Although really the take of the film is that all the Kens are gay. There was nothing explicitly gay about anything in this film. There are a few like tongue in cheek gay jokes, sure, but definitely no way that it say all the Kens were gay. 
And also, like, never did they actually mention or do anything explicitly gay ever in the whole film. The take of the film is that it is impossible to be a woman in the modern age. Impo absolutely impossible. And so we get this long speech of America Fur talking about how it's so difficult to be a woman. They want us to be this way, but not that way. They want us to be thin, but they don't want us to say that we're thin. They want us to earn money, but they don't want us to earn money. They want us to do this, and they don't want us to do that. They want us to answer for men's bad behavior, but they don't want us to offend men. They want us to do this, and they don't want us Oh my God, it's so difficult to be a woman. So the same tried, truistic bullshit that they've been propagating in every new wave feminist film for the last 45 years in the United States. Because it's still fucking true. That's why, because it's still true. Has it changed? No. So they're gonna keep fucking saying it until it fucking does, because it hasn't changed. This makes me so mad to watch a man sit here and say all of this. Like I've never wanted to just like, you as a man cannot sit here and talk about the experience of a woman. You can't sit here and tell me that my life isn't that hard, that I don't have to deal with all of these problems because I fucking do. We all do. All the women I know who watched this movie felt so seen and understood because yeah, yeah, that is how it is. And it is a constant internal struggle that we go through every fucking day. And you will never know because we do live in a patriarchy and you are a cis man. So like, shut the fuck up, bro. Shut up. You don't know and you never fucking will. You don't have a place to talk about this. Then they say, you know what we need to do? We need to disabuse all of these Barbies of the patriarchy. How are we gonna do this? We need, to, we need to allow them to live with the cognitive dissonance required to be a woman under the patriarchy. That's a line from Barbie. Now again, they keep doing this. They keep having Barbie drop these extremely literate and well-articulated lines, but she's supposed to be a plastic doll idiot. No, she's fuck. stop saying that. If you say Barbie is meant to be a dumb airhead one more time, I am going to punch you through the screen. What are they going to do to stop this vote? How are they gonna do it? Well. They're going to separate the men and the women. It's so subtle, the symbolism is so subtle. Turn all the women against the men and you will save society. If you see these women being empowered as them being turned against men, what the fuck? No, what, they, what is happening right now at this part of the movie is that the men are in power and the, the women are serving them. They've lost themselves completely and their entire identities now revolve around serving these men. And these other women come in and are like, you are your own person. You can't let men walk all over you. You can't let men control you. You are a strong woman and you don't fucking need them. You cannot need a man and still like men. You can be aware that women are treated badly and unequally and still like men. You just don't like the ones who treat you badly. And in this instance, right now, that's all of the Kens. <laughs> it's just telling these women, hey, don't put up with that shit. Don't you deserve better than that? It's fucked up what they're doing. That's, and you have a problem with that? You think that that's them being turned into man haters? You think that that's what men are? Are you, are you agreeing and you're saying that all men are like that and by saying don't tolerate that, you're saying you should hate men? Because that's a big fucking yikes. That's not an okay way to act and treat women. And I think that it's a good thing to tell young girls to not put up with that. To tell young girls that you don't serve men, you don't have to give up your identity to serve men, you belong in a position of power and doing what you want to do as your own independent person. You can still like men because guess fucking what? Stereotypical Barbie, the main Barbie, is like, I still care about Ken. I know that he is in there. He's just a bit confused right now. Like, I don't wanna hurt him. They don't hate the Kens. They want to help the Kens. Let me just digress briefly here in how women actually achieved power in Western civilization? The answer is that they lobbied men and men gave it to them. That is the actual answer as to how women achieve power in Western civilization. The amendment to the constitution that allowed women to vote was passed solely by men because women couldn't vote. It turns out there are a lot of good-hearted men out there who like women and who want women to be able to live lives that they want. No one is saying that 
all men hate women and no men want women to be successful. No one's fucking saying that, bro. However, I love when this point always comes up of people just being like, women have equality because they can vote. They're equal citizens. They can vote, they can get jobs, they can work. They have the capability of being CEOs. Look, here's a female CEO. That's not the same thing. And again, this is a joke. <laughs> Like, I fucking hate to break this to you, bro. But this whole section, this whole section's meant to be funny. This this part's a joke, yeah? It's about how men love to mansplain. It's about how men's ego is so fragile, how it's so easy to distract them because they view women as objects. It, it's about men's ego. It's a joke. I love, I love that he just like doesn't understand humor at all because as soon as women are funny and make jokes that are funny to women and men who don't have fragile egos such as his own. He doesn't think it's funny and he thinks it should be taken seriously. It's not meant to be taken seriously, bro. It's a fucking joke. We're laughing at men. <laughs> and apparently we're laughing at men like you because you were clearly very offended by this. So maybe you should take some time to reflect um, because yeah, we were laughing at you. They bring all the Barbies one by one. They distract them. They bring the Barbies in one by one and they unbrainwash them. How do they unbrainwash them? Well, they tell them truths like any power you have must be masked under a giggle. I have a question. I mean, I work with a lot of women. Do they feel like the power that they have has to be masked under a giggle? Constantly, yes. Uh, my piece on this part here, and this is especially true based on how much you don't understand a joke, you'll notice a lot of the time in my videos when I, I leave in a lot of my laughs. I'll laugh about something, I'll say something, and I'll never cut out my laugh or I'll make sure that I laugh afterwards so people know that I'm fucking joking. Because the second I don't include my laugh afterwards, I get people making videos about me. I get people in my comments telling me that I hate men, that I, that I am a terrible person because they can't seem to understand that I can make a fucking joke. And that happens to so many female content creators to which like, we can't say jokes because men genuinely don't believe we know what a fucking joke is. I have to laugh and keep that in because otherwise people will rip me apart. And I know this because it happens constantly. And so I have learned to always laugh after a joke. And if I don't, nine times out of 10, it gets cut out of my video because I do not want to deal with the repercussions of that. One of them says, you have to reject men's advances without damaging their ego. Or theoretically, you could just reject men's advances and damage their ego because what do you care? Because a lot of the time, if you reject men's advances and damage their ego, they hurt you. That's why, not all the time, not all men, but you never know which men. And way too often does it happen that when you reject men's advances, women will get beaten up. They'll get assaulted either sexually or physically. They'll get emotionally abused. They'll get verbally attacked. You have to let them down without damaging their ego because men are fucking scary. That's why. I'm glad that you're someone who, if you get rejected, you'll just be like, okay, that's fine. And carry on. A lot of men aren't like that. You are watching this through a male lens, which makes sense. You're a man. However, it means that you're missing all of these valuable and important points. The point is, is that women are sharing these things from their own experiences and you are meant to listen to that and be like, oh my God, is it really like that for women? The answer is yes. All of these things that she's saying are true. You just don't experience them because you refuse to listen to women who talk about them and you will never have to experience it in your life because you are a man. Okay, so then final step is that they are going to turn the men against each other. How are they going to turn the men against each other? They're going to turn the men against each other by switching partners. They're going to get together and Barbie is going to be with Ken, classic Barbie and classic Ken. They're going to be together, but then they're going to move on to the other Kens and the Kens are going to start fighting each other over the ladies because they're going to, to switch over. Now, um, not to put too fine a point on this, but this makes no sense at all because guess what would happen if a bunch of beautiful women decided to switch to other men simultaneously? You know what the men would do? They would throw a party. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny that he like, is just painting men out to be terrible in just a different way. He's like, yes, men do objectify women. Yes, men do sexualize women and would love to have 
lots of beautiful women flirt with them at one time. They don't actually give a fuck about their partner because let me remind you, Ben Shapiro, these Barbies and Kens are in relationships. Ken at the beginning said, we're boyfriend, girlfriend, which implies that every Barbie has a Ken whom they are in a relationship with. But it doesn't matter, right? Fuck commitment. Fuck your partner. It doesn't matter. You can all just switch. No, maybe they care about their Barbie. Like maybe they care about their girlfriend. And it fucking sucks when they see their girlfriend get up and talk to another man. It doesn't matter if another beautiful woman is speaking to them. That's not their girlfriend. And you implying that any man would say, if (laughs) if you were out on a date with your wife and your wife like got up and went and started flirting with another man and a different woman came up and started flirting with you, would you have a party? Have you told your wife that? You talk so much about how male fantasies are sleeping with a lot of beautiful women for a man who is very marriage monogamy oriented. Is everything all right at home, Ben? Everything okay? You need. I feel like you might need to have a conversation with your wife. So they turn the men against each other. And then we get a 20 minute long segment of the Kens fighting each other using various implements ranging from like small bows and arrows with sticky cups at the end. To, uh, to tennis rackets. And then what are the women doing during this time? The women are voting. The women are voting. So now we know the Democratic turnout strategy. The Democratic turnout strategy in 2024 is going to be to get all of the Republicans to fight with one another using tennis rackets while they go and they do the voting, apparently. Ooh, that's a great idea, actually. Someone get on that. <laughs> I love that, like, no, that's not the point at all. This is just a point of, like, these men are fucking, they have big egos and they prioritize that over everything else. Like men literally fight wars over this shit. But I like your idea. Get Republicans to fight each other with tennis rackets and everyone else would go vote. Um, Yeah, no, good idea. It's not what the movie was saying, but I I like it. Ken, now really sad because he's lost his power and all he wanted in the first place was just to be treated decently by Barbie. Is he treated decently at the end by Barbie? Of course he isn't. That would be silly. At the very end, he is told that he needs to learn to live without Barbie. He needs to learn to be apart from Barbie and she needs to learn to be apart from him because atomistic isolation and loneliness is the best way to find fulfillment, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, bro. (laughs) It's actually a very good fucking message. Independence is so important. You need to know who you are as your own person. Your identity should never rely on another person. Ken needs to know who Ken is without Barbie because he needs to be his own full person. That is a very important thing for everyone to learn. This is an important message for men, for women, for everyone. You cannot exist for another person. Even if you are in a long-term committed relationship, you have to be your own person. You cannot entirely rely on another person. And in that, you can be your own full self and be in a healthy, committed, loving relationship. In fact, that is the way you should be in those relationships. Your relationship will not be full and enriching and as loving as it can be if you aren't too whole people. You have to find yourself and know who you are and have your own voice in any relationship. And that is a very important takeaway. I can't believe you don't like that message. You don't like the message that Ken should be his own person and that Ken is and has enough like power to be his own person. Like you didn't like that he was secondary to Bobby and like treated badly by women. Um, but now you're complaining about the fact that he's allowed to be independent? What is it? You you would just be happy if Bobby and Ken stayed together, but Ken had all the power. Is that what you want? Is Would that make you happy? We learn that men and women are supposed to be separate. They are not supposed to be together. And that maybe the matriarchy will allow the men not to be on the Supreme Court, but maybe they can get some lower circuit court judgeships. And we learn one day the Kens might have as much power and influence in Barbie world as women have in the real world. Because, of course, women are, are, again, just absolutely subjugated in the real world. Yeah, it is the thing, though, Ben. Um, why did that line upset you so much? They said, maybe one day, maybe one day, Kens will have as much power in Barbie world as women do in the real world. 
They didn't say, they didn't say that that meant where they just agreed for them to only have lower level jobs. That's the beginning. That's the first step. One day, Ken's will have as much power in Barbie land as women do in the real world. And that upset you. Why? Because that sounds like you acknowledging that women don't have as much power in the real world because otherwise you'd be like, oh great. So one day in Barbie world, they'll finally get to a place where Barbies and Kens are equal. But you didn't think that. You could, you could have interpreted that as them finally getting equality one day, but you didn't because true gender equality does not exist in our world. You think that's the end of the movie, wrong. This thing has more endings than Lord of the Rings. America Ferrera wants to make ordinary Barbie which by the way, would sell zero. But he says, we'll make ordinary Barbie and then girls all over the world will know that ordinariness is fine and okay. Because it's not that girls play with Barbie because they think that she's beautiful and it's aspirational. No, it's, it's bad. I, that was a bit of a call out there though, being like girls play with Barbie because they think she's beautiful and it's aspirational. You guys catch that? Did you know that young girls only play with Barbie because she's beautiful and that is aspirational, her beauty? So you are the problem in the world, actually. You are the reason that that rant in the middle happened. Girls don't play with Barbie because Barbie can be anything and do anything. They play with Barbie because they wanna look like Barbie. Are you telling your daughters that? Cause that's a real fucking problem. Normal Barbie would sell because like personally, you know, I saw all Barbies as just normal Barbies. I didn't get Barbies with specific jobs or anything. They were just Barbies and they did what I wanted them to do. But seeing normal Barbies in the shop, I feel like is like validating for mothers too. Like telling your daughter when you give her a Barbie, you can be anything. And like giving her just like a normal Barbie, I feel like is like, it's validating for both the mother and the daughter. And I feel like that's the thing with Barbies. You are involved in your children's life. You should be playing with your children and you are never too old to learn, to grow, to be inspired. And I feel like a lot of playing with your children, a lot of conversations with your children, a lot of television with your children is also helping you learn and grow as an adult too. And I think that having a normal Barbie, although your kids don't give a fuck, that's validating for you to see as a mother. Then we have ending number three. Barbie, it turns out, she spent too much time in the real world. That was the patriarchy was terrible. So terrible that she wanted to stop it from happening in Barbie land. But now she wants to go back there because she actually learned some feelings. It's because she wanted to make real change and she can't make real change in a false world. So we've learned early on in the movie, when she goes to the real world, she's catcalled by a bunch of the construction guys. And she says, I don't have a vagina. When she has turned into a real woman, she has now grown a vagina. So the first thing that she does is she goes to the gynecologist because ladies, the apotheosis of your being is not motherhood. We, we got rid of that at the very beginning. And it's not being a wife or a partner because women are supposed to be apart from men. It is your vagina. It was just a little silly thing that they put at the end of the movie. That's it. It was just a joke. It wasn't saying that her like vagina makes her a woman. It wasn't saying that her entire being revolves around her having a vagina. It was just a little ha ha funny because now she has a vagina and she doesn't know what the fuck to do with it. And she's excited. It was no deeper meaning. There was no deeper purpose other than just a little joke at the end of the movie. And I'm sorry that you have no sense of humor at all, but it was, it was pretty fucking funny. Also, yeah, do tell kids that the gynecologist is important. It's a very intimidating, scary thing. Making it into like a fun and exciting thing, that's kind of cool. Cause gynecologists are typically a very scary thing um, that people are like nervous about or are uncomfortable about, you know? And making it into this like exciting thing, I think that's great. It's a cool thing to do. Ladies, this is what makes you the most human you can be, is that you go to the gynecologist. Now, I could point out here, that that's really transphobic. What has that got to do with anything? <laughs> How is going to the gynecologist transphobic? Bobby is a cis woman, so she's going to the gynecologist. If she was a trans woman, she wouldn't go to the gynecologist. If she was like a trans man, she would also go to the gynecologist. She is a cis woman, so she's going to the gyne- okay. What it boils down to at the very end, apparently, is being biologically female 
is the only thing that matters. And that's it, kind of. How in the holy fuck did you reach that conclusion? I love that they put just like a little joke at the end of the movie. And you're like, so obviously the entire movie is about how all women have vaginas and that's all that matters in the entire world. Bro really can't take a joke at all. I like barely have words for that just because I, I didn't even realize it was like possible to read the movie that way. Like I, I, didn't, even re I didn't even realize that that was a possibility. I don't know how you managed to do that. That's quite impressive, actually. There's a reason this film has 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. And the reason is, if you are on the left, you can make one of the world's most boring, crappy comedies. You can waste an extraordinary amount of money and talent. You can waste some of the great IP ever created. But as long as you slather it in a bunch of warmed over glorious Steinem nonsense, the critics will just salivate over you. They'll pretend that this is an actual good movie. Or, or everyone has different taste. Everyone likes different things. And some women like to feel validated, feel seen, feel heard, and relate to the characters in this movie. And some of us find it funny and think that you have poor taste bad humor and bad politics. If you if you walked into this movie and you knew nothing of what I just said, what, what would you think this movie is? You would think that this movie was probably something like the Disney movie Enchanted, but with Barbie. I honestly expected it to be way more man -hatey. I I went into this thinking that we were just gonna be hating men. That's what I went in thinking. And then we went into it and we ended up loving men. So you watched it badly. Men are important, women are important. We should all love each other and be our own people and support each other. That was the message of the movie. Um, you just didn't see it like that because you think anytime a woman is in power, it means that we hate men and men are trash and should die, which is a bit yikes on your behalf. Anytime there's equality at all, you're like, oh my God, you hate men. Mm, that's on, that's on you. I, I've been here for way too long, so I can't sit here and give like all of my opinions and rundown on the Barbie movie and everything about it. But me and Kat are going to be doing a podcast on it soon. So if you want to see us sit and talk about our own thoughts and opinions on the Barbie movie, then you can go subscribe to our podcast, which is Savvy Cat Productions. Um, and we'll have an episode up for you shortly. If you want to hear all of our thoughts without being interrupted by Ben Shapiro, then go check that out because... It's gonna be a good time. All right, so we have two minutes left of this video for him to give his review on Oppenheimer. Um, it can't be that great if you've only left two minutes to review it. Considering you spent 40 minutes hating something, what's your two minute good review? Let's see, is it just gonna be a bomb explosion with like, no woman, so good. That's my guess on his review. <laughs> And also, by the way, Oppenheimer is good. His Oppenheimer review is also, by the way, Oppenheimer is good. I, well, that was Ben Shapiro reviews Bobby for an upsettingly long period of time. I'm so exhausted after watching that. Oh my God, that drained all of the life out of my body. I'm gonna have a nap. I hope that you all enjoyed. This video is ridiculously long. Um, so sorry about that. But also, not really. Kind of. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Um, again, if you want to go listen to me and Kat rant about Bobby and talk about all of our thoughts without being interrupted by the annoying man child that is Ben Shapiro, then you can go to our podcast, Savvy Cat Productions, and listen to it there. I'm not sure when it'll be up, but it'll be there eventually. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Harry, Toulouse, Bobby, Sparrow, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Trini, Ida, Raven, Danielle, Enoli Like Cannoli, Elias, Evie, Jewel, Apollo, Taylor is Trying, Boston, and Chris. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash Savvy Cat or click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as bonus mini podcasts, live streams like this one that I'm doing right now. Um, outtakes, vlogs, and more. 
I appreciate it so much, so thank you. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, The Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, That Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah.